when you guys have been in in the playoffs, being up a game, how much do you guys talk about just not being satisfied as a group and to keep applying that pressure? Uh, I mean, we just have honest conversations of just the uh, type of energy we have to bring into the game and, um, you know, also just being aware that we're playing against a great team and uh, we want to respect the, the other group and I think that's most important, just respecting your opponent and uh, giving the game what it needs. So just getting prepared, make sure you're rested, making sure the strategy is ingrained in your head for tonight and uh, just be ready for a warlike environment, you know, very loud and uh, very physical. Hey, you and uh, Luca have talked about how you guys have formed your guys' relationship. Mm -hmm. How much having a championship winning and a former superstar coach kind of like guiding that building of the relationship also helped? Uh, it makes things a lot easier. Uh, we don't take our skill sets or talents for granted. Uh, we understand that that comes from God, that comes from a spiritual source. So uh, when we get a chance to express uh, how we feel about each other, we're very authentic, we're very honest, and uh, I think that translates on the court. You know, a lot of our closeness uh, starts uh, on our relationships as brothers off the court, um, and then you know it just makes it easier to go out there and compete. Uh, we just respect each other's skill sets, like I said. How do you feel about the coverage that they got on you on defense last game mm -hmm. and the difference between first half and second half for you? Uh, yeah, no, it was it was a great first half. Uh, felt like I was just pacing the game a little bit and um, just making sure we got up the floor. I was understanding that they were coming off a of game seven, uh, so they could have been a little fatigued, but we just wanted to stay aggressive and make sure that we took advantage of the easy opportunities. And in the second half, uh, I like to say that Luca joined the party, my teammates joined the party, and um, you know when we're playing well like that, it, it goes a long way in terms of just our poise and, and just being comfortable in the game. We, we understand we're going against a great team, like I said, but we just got to keep staying aggressive and make sure that they feel us as well. Henry, there's been a lot of these, uh, a lot of these games where you were the one joining the party in the second half, mm -hmm. scoring those. Is there a priority or, a, or an emphasis on you being more aggressive early on and, and, and being a tone setter? No, it's, it's just like the same way in the, in the last series and also in the Clipper series, just uh, being able to flow into the game and, and not overthink it and. Whatever the, the game shows me, just being able to utilize my skill set, my talent to uh, offer my teammates some peace of mind out there. You know, I, I can score with the best of them, like I said, but some games I'm um, just going to be needed to play a different role, and, that, and that's okay as well. That's just part of the growth of our team and part of our identity is just being able to uh, adapt and adjust well on the fly. How do you think? I think you and Drew Holiday are the last one standing that already have a ring on the playoffs. So how do you think that affects like the Dallas for better? Uh, I mean, it, it gives us experience. It, it, I mean, I feel like I use my experience very well, just being able to communicate with the guys and let them know what type of environment we're going into. Um, but at the end of the day, they got to get their experience too. And uh, I think that's the fun part about competition is, uh, you know, you can obviously have a veteran presence, but until the young guys go through it, they have no idea what it's like. So I think that's what we're in the process of doing is, is just having fun, competing at a high level. And then whether mistakes happen or not, we're still living with each other, you know. And that's the, the sentiment with our group is we win together and we lose together and uh, you know just being ready to be mature about the approach you know we we're going into a hostile environment tonight so we gotta look forward to it. Tyree, their, uh, their ball pressure has Minnesota's ball pressure has impacted a lot of guards in these playoffs what is it about you and Luca that kind of allows you guys to navigate that? Uh, I I just feel like it's our threat to be able to go to the basket from you know three-quarter court and be able to speed up the court and um, bring their bigs further away from the basket um, you know I think in the other series, they had guards that were very aggressive, uh, but we're, we're a little bit different, you know, in terms of how we like to attack and how we like to play off each other, me and Luca. And, and I think that we have a, a, a good uh, mix of just not playing your turn, my turn, but just creating opportunities for not only ourselves, but for our teammates. So whenever we're doing the, the we're making the right basketball plays, it, it's just a beautiful game to watch and beautiful game to be a part of. When you're when you're navigating kind of the emotions of a series, I know you don't want to get too high or too low with that. But how how do you not how like how do you regulate to make sure you're not swinging to extremes? Uh, by not treating the game of basketball very extreme. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's it, it is the Western Conference Finals. Aware of the environment that we're in, uh, extra media coverage, a, a, a lot more um, responsibilities. Uh, that you have to be aware of in order to prepare, but this is a time where you eliminate a lot of those distractions and you eliminate a, a lot of the extra fluff and you just go in your room and, and you really focus on what you want to accomplish and that's that time of the year to do so. There's only four teams left. Uh, family should understand, media should understand, and, and I think that that's what comes with this. So uh, I try to use my experience of being at the, the highest level or the finals or the conference finals 
um, as a litmus test, uh, you know, as a stress test, and, and um, be able to coach my guys better alongside JK and, and the rest of the coaches and be an extension of those guys, but also understand that I'm still learning myself as a student of the game. So um, just having with, fun with that process too, you know, just figuring it out. You, you just said your turn, my turn, or turn describing how you and you and Luca are not like that. Um, what is what is your turn, my turn kind of look like, and how do you guys avoid that? Just kind of break down that. Uh, I mean, your turn, my turn. Basketball is. It, I, I like to use the example of um, you know you, you make it easier for the defense to guard you. Um, you. You make it easy for the defense to scheme against you. Um, you know, when you have uh, two premier scores on a team or three premier scores, right, and trying to make it work, and it's your turn, my turn. Uh, sometimes as a player, you can lose sight of the rest of the court and what's going on and also your impact on the other ends of the floor. Uh, so it, it's really uh, just about getting that out of your head. That's like, I like to compare like fifth grade, sixth grade basketball where you get it one time and I get it one time. And then when things don't work, we try to give it to somebody else who hasn't shot in six minutes because we've been shooting the whole time. Um, but yeah, just that, that's, that's the... Uh, the growth that I've had is just being aware of uh, how the game of basketball is supposed to be played and uh, really appreciating the guys who came before me that, that showed me the formula and have been teaching me that it's about a team game. And the more that you get out of your own way and, and you become more selfless, uh, the more opportunities come to you. So, so just, yeah, go ahead. So, so as long as you guys are making each other better with or without the ball. It's, yeah, and it's yeah. not just us, it's everybody. And, yeah. and I, I don't know that we get, uh, you know, kind of this phrase that it's a duo and me and Luke are leading it or Luke is number one, I'm number two. I, I think we've tried our best to distance ourselves from that as much as possible because we want to be remembered as a great team and known as a great team. And that's how we, we, we share our success as a team. How did you go about, did you, did you think of like other great guards that were, you know, combinations like when Earl Monroe, say, I don't know if you remember when he was traded to the Knicks from Baltimore, you know, and, and how that worked. And because if you wanted to make it work, it will work. Was that the, the philosophy kind of that you took toward that? You said if you make it, if you, if want, you, want, it if you want to make it work, you'll make it work. Uh, yes, but it also takes experience and taking some teaching, you know, and, and also failing together. Uh, when you put guys together, sometimes it doesn't mesh well right away. And I think, you know, I included myself just as uh, as a competitor and also seeing a bunch of my peers and going through different organizational transitions. Uh, I think some people give up too soon, you know, and obviously you can have a three year run, a four year run, but I think people give up too soon in the first year, two years, you're trying to put pressure on guys to be very successful right away. Uh, and I think that's unhealthy, man. I, I think that you got to give uh, people grace and um, allow the transition to happen organically and allow the, the uh, talent to mesh. Um, so that, that's why I like to look at it. It's just, you know, these are my brothers of our lifetimes off the court, but when we get on the court and we have this moment, I try to also elaborate that don't take this for granted. You know, it's not too often that you're going to have a guy like me or Luca being able to play together um, and other guys, D Jones picking up, PJ be traded at the right time, Gaff be traded at the right time. A lot of things had to go right for us to be in this position. So. Um, I try to mirror that uh, reflection of just not taking it for granted and giving guys grace to grow into their roles. Um, but when you have other guys that are willing to be selfless, it makes the goal e a lot easier. Harry, so Ant, yeah. Ant said, Ant is one of the faces of the league and he's so young and he said he wanted to guard you one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. So as you are a competitor, a veteran guy, does that extra motivate you because you were on fire on the first half? Uh, yeah, when I said it was extra motivation, it, it wasn't anything personal against Ant. It was just more or less... Uh, um, us uh, now growing up in the league and me being in my 13th year, him being in his um, you know first few years as well and, and being ultra successful. Um, that's the familiarity I have with a lot of these young guys is coming into the league with a lot of pressure and answering that call. Um, you know, I, I had the great opportunity to win a championship in you know, my first five years. So I accomplished things that a lot of guys didn't get to accomplish and I know what that takes and you have to have that no fear mentality. So that's what Ant has and uh, it just makes me better. So I'm, I'm appreciative that he's able to push me at this, at this age, but I'm also able to push him and inspire him. Yep. Thanks, Seth.